Let us discuss about male reproductive system in human beings. Human male reproductive system consists of the following organs. Testes, scrotum, epididymis, vas deferens, or sperm duct, seminal vesicles, prostrate gland and penis. The male reproductive system consists of portions which produce the germ cells, and other portions that deliver the germ cells to the site of fertilization. Testes are the oval shaped organs. These are the primary reproductive organ in males. It helps in the formation of male sex cells, called germ cells or sperms. This is located outside the abdominal cavity in scrotum because, sperm formation requires a lower temperature than the normal body temperature. In addition to regulating the formation of sperms, testis also makes the male sex hormone called testosterone. This brings about changes in appearance seen in boys at the time of puberty. The sperms formed in testes come out and move into epididymis. From epididymis, the sperms are delivered through the vas deferens, which unites with a tube called urethra coming from the urinary bladder. Along the path of the vas deferens, glands like the prostate and the seminal vesicles and their secretions, so that the sperms are now in a fluid which makes their transport easier and this fluid also provides nutrition. This liquid with sperms is called semen. The urethra thus forms a common passage for both the sperms and urine. Urethra carries the sperms to an organ, called penis which opens outside the body. The penis passes the sperms from the man's body, into vagina in the woman's body during the process of reproduction. Now let us move on to reproductive system of a human female. The human female reproductive system consists of the following organs, ovaries, oviducts, ureters, and vagina. Ovaries are the oval shaped organs which are inside abdominal cavity of a woman near the kidneys. In females there are two ovaries. Ovaries are the primary reproductive system in females. The function of ovaries is to make mature female sex cells or female gametes called ovar eggs and also make female sex hormone called oestrogen or progesterone. When a girl is born, the ovaries already contain thousands of immature eggs. On reaching puberty stage, some of these start maturing. One egg is produced every month by one of the ovaries. The egg is carried from the ovary to the womb through a thin oviduct or fallopian tube. The two oviducts unite into an elastic bag-like structure known as the uterus. The uterus opens into the vagina through the cervix. Vagina receives sperms from penis during sexual intercourse. Vagina is a tubular structure. It is also called birth canal because it passes the sperms. The sperms travel upwards and reach the oviduct where they may encounter the egg. The fertilized egg, the zygote, gets implanted in the lining of the uterus, and starts dividing. The uterus prepares itself every month to receive, and nurture the growing embryo. The embryo gets nutrition from the mother's blood with the help of a special tissue called placenta. On the mother's side are blood spaces, which provide a large surface area for glucose and oxygen, to pass from the mother to the embryo. What happens, if the egg is not fertilized? If the egg is not fertilized, it lives for about only one day. Since the ovary releases one egg every month, the uterus also prepares itself every month to receive a fertilized egg. Thus its lining becomes thick and spongy. This would be required for nourishing the embryo if fertilization had taken place. Once the fertilization takes place, however, this lining is not needed any longer. So, the lining slowly breaks and comes out through the vagina as blood and mucus. This cycle takes place roughly every month and is known as menstruation. It usually lasts for about 2 to 8 days. Every individual should be aware of the possible health consequences of having sex. Let us discuss few points for maintaining reproductive health. Diseases can be sexually transmitted between two bodies. Causes bacterial infection like gonorrhea, syphilis and viral infections like warts and HIV AIDS. 
the transmission of infectious diseases, can be prevented by using a condom during sexual intercourse. The sexual act always has the potential to lead to pregnancy. Unwanted pregnancy can be avoided by the usage of condoms, contraceptive pills. Let us now have a look at the contraceptive methods used by human beings for prevention of births. Birth control methods in human beings. The prevention of pregnancy in women is called contraception, and any device or chemical which prevents pregnancy is called a contraceptive. All the birth control methods can be broadly divided as barrier methods, chemical methods, and surgical methods. Let us discuss about these methods of contraception in detail. Barrier methods. In barrier methods of preventing pregnancy, the physical devices such as condoms and diaphragm are used. Condoms are used by males and diaphragm is used by females. Both these devices prevent the sperms from meeting the ovum by acting as a barrier between them. Here note that the use of barrier methods protects from sexually transmitting diseases like gonorrhea, syphilis and AIDS. Chemical methods. In chemical methods of preventing pregnancy, the females use two types of pills which are made of specific drugs. Oral pills and vaginal pills. The oral pills contain hormones which stop the ovaries from releasing ovum into the oviduct. Oral pills are also called as oral contraceptives. This is very effective method of preventing pregnancy so long as the pills are taken at the right time. The vaginal pills contain the chemicals called spermicide which kills the sperms. Intrauterine contraceptive device. The use of intrauterine contraceptive device called copper tea is also very effective in preventing pregnancy. A copper tea is placed inside the uterus by a doctor. Copper tea cannot protect from sexually transmitted diseases. Surgical methods. Surgical methods of birth control are available for males as well as females. In males a small portion of sperm duct is removed by surgical operation and both ends are tied properly. This prevents sperms from coming out. This process is called vasectomy. In females a small portion of the oviducts is removed by surgical operation and the cut ends are tied. This prevents the ovum from entering into the oviducts. This process is called as tubectomy. Let us summarize all the points covered in this lesson. Reproduction is not essential for the survival of an organism, but is vital for the survival of a species. Reproduction involves creation of a DNA copy and additional cellular apparatus by the cell involved in the process. In fission, many bacteria and protozoa simply divide into two or more daughter cells. Organisms such as hydro regenerate if they are broken into pieces. They also give out buds which mature into new individuals. Roots, stems, and leaves of some plants develop into new plants through vegetative propagation. Sexual reproduction involves two individuals for the creation of a new individual. Reproduction in flowering plants involves transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma which is referred to as pollination. This is followed by fertilization. Sexual reproduction in human beings involves the introduction of sperm in the vagina of the female. Fertilization occurs in the fallopian tube. Remember these important points. Reproduction is essential for continuity of living organisms. Reproduction involves creation of a DNA copy along with the formation of additional cellular apparatus during cell division. Reproduction is of two types, asexual and sexual. Asexual reproduction happens in single cell or single individual. For example fission, fragmentation, regeneration, budding and spore formation. Sexual reproduction involves two individuals to produce offspring. For example human beings. Variations occur in children due to DNA copying mechanism and sexual reproduction. Beard and moustache in boys and growth in breast region in girls are the changes seen in human beings at puberty. 
Sexual reproduction takes place by fusion of both male and female gametes, resulting in the formation of zygote which gives rise to offspring. Awareness regarding family planning and sex-related communicable diseases help individual to maintain normal reproductive health. Condoms, oral pills, carpet are some of the contraceptives to avoid pre